What is going on everybody? It's Medicosis Perfectionitis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our 5-minute review playlist. In previous videos, we talked about acute otitis media, which can lead to brain abscess. We talked about chronic suppurative otitis media, which can lead to a brain abscess. We talked about mastoiditis, which could be caused by otitis media and then later causes a brain abscess. And we talked about the ugly cholesteatoma, which is not a true neoplasm. However, it can keep invading the bone and invading the bone, getting bigger and bigger and bigger until pew, it opens your skull and can lead to all kinds of infection in your brain. What's the definition of an abscess? An abscess is a collection of pus. And remember, itis, itis, acute inflammation, pay attention. Redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function. Ruber, calor, tumor, dollar, functual, let's say. And because I have a collection of pus in my brain, I have a mass in my brain, I can suffer from focal neurological symptoms as well as high intracranial pressure symptoms. Click the like button, click the subscribe button, and let's get started. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order. A quick review on the anatomy of the ear. Of course, you know that your ear is made of external ear, middle ear, and internal ear. Otitis externa, otitis media, otitis interna. The external ear is made of the ear pinna, external auditory canal, and the eardrum, or the tympanic membrane, or membrana tympanicum. The middle ear is deep to the tympanic membrane and it has the three famous bony ossicles that vibrate to conduct sound into the oval window of your inner ear. Here is the oval window, here is the inner ear, here is cranial nerve number 8, the vestibulocochlear nerve or simply the auditory nerve. The problem with otitis media or infection of the middle ear is that it can spread. Spread to which location? Well, since your brain is above the middle ear, it can chew, spread through the roof, especially if you are a young child because these bones have not ossified yet. This ear infection can become brain infection, including brain abscess. Also, middle ear infection or otitis media can spread backwards to the mastoid air cells causing mastoiditis, which can spread to your sigmoid venous sinus, which is a venous sinus in the skull, and it can also become brain abscess or encephalitis or meningitis. Here is acute otitis media. Please recall the complications include cerebral abscess formation or autogenic abscess formation or all kinds of abscess formation. Pause and review. Acute otitis media can become chronic otitis media, which can also spread to your brain. Otitis media can lead to mastoiditis and mastoiditis can lead to brain abscess. Pause and review. It's itis, itis, acute inflammation, pay attention. Redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function. Ruber, calor, tumor, dollar, functual, let's say. Look at the ear infection spreading. It can spread to your brain or to structures outside the brain. The infection spread can lead to extradural abscess or epidural abscess, or it can lead to cerebral or brain abscess. It can lead to encephalitis, meningitis, meningoencephalitis, empyema, and much more. And this spread can lead to tons of destruction. Let's review some medicosis neuropathology nuggets. What is meningitis? Meningitis is inflammation of the meninges that cover your brain and your spinal cord. Thank you. How about if the pathology affects the brain itself? Then it's called encephalopathy. What if it's an infection or inflammation of the brain matter itself, the brain substance? With our forebrain, midbrain, hindbrain, we don't care. We call this encephalitis. What if there is some mushy infection only of the cerebrum, i.e. the forebrain, not midbrain or hindbrain? We call this cerebritis. When it organizes itself in a ball of pus, i.e. a mass of pus, a sphere of pus, we call this cerebral abscess or brain abscess. We're done with the brain. Let's talk about your spinal cord. If the disease affects the spinal cord itself, which lies in the core of your vertebral column, we call it myelopathy. Because myelo means what? The core, in the middle, in the center of your vertebral canal. But if the disease affects the spinal nerve root as it leaves the spinal cord, it's called the radiculopathy. But if it affects the peripheral nerve, it's called peripheral neuropathy. And this can happen to a cranial nerve or to a spinal nerve. Who else is gonna teach you like this? Your woke professor with his PowerPoint? Give me a break. Anytime you want to download these doozy handwritten notes, just go to medicosisperfectionalis.com. Any brain mass, could be tumor, could be abscess, etc. 
can lead to increased intracranial pressure because there is something in neurology known as the Monroe Kelly hypothesis, which states that your cranium is like a box that is 100% packed and stacked and full of stuff. There is no room for anyone else. There is not an inch of empty space. That's why if a tumor or an abscess decides to grow, it will push on other structures and the intracranial pressure has to rise, which can lead to vomiting because it presses on your brainstem and the vomiting center is there. This vomiting is projectile. Headache, frontal headache, more common in the morning and it increases as I lean forwards. Blurry vision and if you look into my retina, I have papilledema bilaterally because the entire brain suffering. And this mass could be a tumor, could be an abscess, is gonna press on other structures leading to focal neurological symptoms. It can press anywhere, causing focal seizures. And you'll find that my left arm is twitching or my right leg is twitching etc. It can press on the optic chiasm leading to bitemporal hemianopia. It can press on a frontal lobe leading to contralateral upper extremity motor paralysis. If this happened in the vicinity of the MCA, but in the vicinity of the ACA, it's going to be the contralateral lower extremity. The mass can press on cranial nerve 3 or cranial nerve 6, leading to visual problems, ophthalmoplegia, paralysis of my eye muscles. It can lead to sensory loss, upstairs or downstairs. It can press on Broca's area and make me unable to talk, or on my Wernicke's area and make me unable to understand, or on my right or non-dominant parietotemporal area, making me neglect the left half of the world. So I will shave only the right half of my face and forget the left. I will put on a jacket only on the right side of my body and forget to put the left sleeve on. If I apply makeup, I'm gonna apply only to the right side. It can press on the cerebellum, leading to ataxia and loss of balance. It can press on the brain stem, leading to nystagmus, vertigo, sensor, neural hearing loss, etc. Especially if this happened at the pontomedullary junction near the vicinity of cranial nerve number 8, the vestibulocochlear nerve. Cerebral abscess, let's go. Risk factors, spread of infection from otitis media, mastoiditis, sinusitis, dental infections, bacteremia, heart disease, especially if I have infective endocarditis with infective bacterial vegetations on my valve. They can dislodge, phew, leading to a nasty bacterial embolus that can reach my brain. Or if I have osteomyelitis, it can spread and I end up with brain abscess. Organisms could be anaerobes, could be viridans in your mouth, could be staph aureus or gram negatives. How did it reach my brain? Could be direct spread, like mastoiditis, or hematogenous spread, like heart disease. Symptoms include focal neurological symptoms that we just talked about, symptoms of increased intracranial pressure that we talked about, and mental status abnormalities. No kidding. This abscess can also cause fever. Yeah, redness, hotness, swelling, pain, loss of function. Diagnosis is made clinically by all of these symptoms, by the history, and by radiological imaging like CT scan. Management, we have to drain this sucker out of the brain, that's a brain surgery right there, and long-term antibiotics to get all of this bacterial gunk out. A wise man once said, it's difficult to make predictions especially about the future. But Medicosis says it's hard to have an abscess, particularly in your cerebrum. To learn more about antibacterials, antivirals, antifungals, and antiparasitic medications, download my antibiotics course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. If you want to learn more about brain diseases like strokes or heart diseases like arrhythmias or lung diseases like ARDS, download my emergency medicine high yields course. To learn more about other infections like chorioamnionitis, endometritis, vaginitis, mastitis, and breast abscess, download my OBGYN high yields course. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Snatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.